Okay, we have here something pretty interesting today. What I wanted to do was try to use Gauss's digamma theorem, which is this whole nightmare expression right here. And we want to use this to evaluate for an exact value of digamma of one over six. So don't get too intimidated by this whole thing because I'm not going to try to derive it or figure out where all this came from. We're just going to use the plug in values and try to see if we can get a nice value for digamma of one over six. A couple interesting things here. It's kind of cool that it's kind of interesting that we actually have the floor function on the bounds of our series right here. That's the floor of M minus one over two. And we have a couple conditions over here to the right that can help us choose our R and M value in order to evaluate this. So first we have R and M are gonna be positive integers. And basically we want this reduced and we want it less than one. We don't wanna do something like seven over six here or something. And we don't want it to be like two over four. Let's just reduce it to one over two. I think maybe you could, but I think it's gonna be easier to just reduce it here and have a positive value between zero and one. So to put this to use on our problem, what we have here is already, it already meets these criteria. We have it, it's already reduced. We have an integer in the numerator and denominator and one sixth is gonna be less than one or between zero and one. So what we're gonna do on this is we just have our R value is gonna be the numerator equal to one and the M value in this is just gonna be six. And then all we're gonna do is just plug in values to this thing. First we have here the Euler Mascheroni constant, which is something around approximately 0 0.577 minus natural log, plug a six in here, we have natural log of 12, minus pi over two, cotangent r over m pi, it's just gonna be pi over six. Cotangent at pi over six, I like to remember the tangent values. Tangent at pi over six is just one over square root of three. Cotangent's just gonna be the reciprocal, so this value is gonna be just square root of three. And then here, this is where we can deal with this floor function. So m is six, M minus one is gonna be five. So what we have here is just the floor function of five over two. You can think of this as something like five over two is exactly 2.5. The floor function is gonna round us down to the next highest integer. So this value is just gonna be two. So, put, so coming to our series, this is just gonna be n equals one to our upper bound reduced to two. Then we have cosine. 2 pi n, I'm, I'm going to leave it unreduced for the moment, so r is going to be 1, we'll leave that off, and we have this m, so we'll have a 6 in the denominator here, and then we have natural log sine pi n over our m value, which is just 6. Now let's just see if we can simplify a few things. First of all, this 2 over 6 here, let's cancel that, 2 over 6 is just 1 over 3. Next, let's just expand out this series. We're just going to have two terms. We're going to have n equals 1 and then n equals 2 for this. So plugging in n equals 1, we have cosine just pi over three times natural log sine of when n's one is just going to be sine pi over six here. And then for the second term, when n equals two, we end up with cosine two pi over three natural log sine pi over three. Then let's just get the values for everything. Cosine pi over three, this is one half here. Sine pi over six, that's also one half. Cosine two pi over three minus one half. This one's gonna be square root of three over two. Before I rewrite, let's actually distribute in the two because then two is gonna cancel out this one half here. And it's also gonna cancel out this minus half. There's still gonna be like a minus one here and that gets rid of this part. Then cleaning it up, I think what I'm gonna do on this, on ln 12, 12 of course is four times three. So with exponent properties, I can actually split that up and write it like this, splitting up the four from the three. Then cleaning up all this stuff here, natural log of one half, I can write that actually as a minus natural log of two. I'm just trying to set up something that's gonna clean this up so we don't have such a long expression on it. So then here, we're gonna have minus one times natural log square root of three. I can split that up as well. We can have this as minus natural log square root of three. Then we're gonna have, this is gonna be like a minus ln two. Distributing in the minus one, we have a plus ln two here. And the reason I'm splitting it up like this, I'm just trying to get a common term. We have our terms that are gonna be like ln2 and our terms that are gonna be ln3. You could do it a different way. Maybe you could get it, like leave it as ln12. I don't know. I'm just trying to get kind of a compact solution to this. Now, to get everything in terms of a two or a three here, I'm gonna write natural log four as two squared. So I can write this as two and bring a two up front here. And then on natural log squared of three, this is the same thing as three to the one half. So I can get this one as three and bring a one half up front. 
So then what happens is I have all my ln2 terms here and then get rid of this and we have a couple of ln3 terms that we can combine together. But then this one's gonna cancel with this one. Let me just reorder it and see what we have here. This is, um, let's get this term over here. So we'll have minus pi over two, square root of three. Putting together our ln3 terms, that's gonna become minus one, minus a half, minus three halves, ln3. And then we have this term left, minus two, ln2, and that's it. Okay, so I think you'll actually find it's not that bad to use it. You know, you're just plugging in numbers, you get directly to a solution. I mean, it is kind of messy. Still, I think my preferred way to do this is what I've done in a previous video on like digamma of one half or one fourth, where we use the reflection formula and the multiplication formula. The trade-off is those formulas are much simpler, but you have to do two formulas. You can't go direct. The advantage of this, it's direct, but you've got this crazy formula you can't remember. So as always, it's up to you. Use whatever formula works best for you. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.